Ah, <sighs> just waking up in the morning. I don't know, but today seems kind of dog smog. Cook the breakfast. <sighs> For those of you that don't love the lyrics of the rap genius Ice Cube. Today we're going to talk about consciousness and drugs. Um, I'll start off by talking about dreams, because that's what a lot of people like to talk about in this segment. I'm about to ruin your life, so bear down. You don't dream when you're asleep. I'll let that sink in. But see, there's a problem, and I'll run you through the logic of it. Here, here is the problem. You only experience the world when you're conscious. You assume that when you're asleep, you are unconscious. When you dream, you have to be conscious in order to understand that dream. You can't have an experience of something or take it in when you're unconscious, therefore, dreaming must occur the moment you become conscious, and this jives well with what's called the activation hypothesis of dreaming, which is that your brain has different levels of activity. We'll go into those in this section, but y your brain has um, a part of sleep that's called paradoxical sleep, or otherwise known as REM, rapid eye movement. And during that sleep, period, your brain is extremely active, almost as if it were awake, although you are deeply unconscious in REM sleep. Uh, babies spend most of their time in REM sleep. So REM sleep is very active brain activity, so it's very much mimicking sort of the activities of conscious level activity, but you're unconscious. When you wake up from that, your brain tries to interpret what just happened to you and give you continuity of experience and we experience those as dreams. A couple things to notice about dreams is that they fade away very quickly. Um, unless you write them down, of course. That's a help, helpful way to stick, stick up with your dreams and understand what, they, uh, what it was like for you to experience them when you initially did. But you don't dream when you're asleep. You can't prove that you dream when you're asleep. So even if you disagree with my hypothesis, you cannot make a counterfactual claim saying, yep, you dream when you're asleep because you couldn't ask anyone. Because A, if you could ask them and they could respond to you, they wouldn't be asleep. Or B, if you could know that they were unconscious and yet they were experiencing something consciously like a, a narrative story form like we have of dreams, they would be conscious, not unconscious. So this distinction I'm sorry that I've ruined your day. Let it sink in, and soon you will realize that it won't actually ruin your day. That your perception is that something is different from what it once was, and that's actually a growth pattern in, in your life. It's not something to be worried about. You haven't lost anything if this is true. I also may be wrong. I am open to you explaining to me how I am wrong about this. I don't think I am, but I'm open to hearing your contentiousness about this. We'll make this a discussion board uh, item for you guys to banter about and, and try out ideas with each other on. Consciousness. I don't know what it is. We don't know how your brain does it. Uh, sorry. I guess I'll tell you what I, I do know. So here we go. All right, we're talking about consciousness, um, which is generally your awareness of stimuli around you, right? We went from the brain to senses, and now we're going to consciousness, which 
the brain sort of together implements a collective sensation or what we call a sensory perception of all the stimuli around you. Now, when are you not aware of the stimuli around you? That's mostly when you're unconscious, when you're asleep. If you are asleep, then you are not aware of those stimuli around you. Um, what consciousness is, isn't a particular thing. It is a process, a system, a grouping of systems and processes that together produce your ability to be aware. For example, when you wake up in the morning, you're not quite as alert and aware of things. If you've ever gone to, I don't know, make coffee and you poured the coffee uh, in, the, in the water container or, or vice versa, the, the water in the coffee grounds uh, container, you know that you are not fully consciously aware of what's going on around you. You're, you're kind of in an awakening state. You're becoming awoken uh, by a process that is happening in your brain. Now what your brain is doing is it's going from a slower level of activity, the neurons that fire periodically, I didn't talk about this, but they have a spontaneous firing rate that neurons just randomly fire. And when I say random, it's because I don't know the mechanism by which they fire in a particular sequence or order, but that sequence or order speeds up. And we can measure this by putting electrodes on your brain and then watching the speed at which neurons fire. When you're doing certain activities, when you're making certain movements, the neurons in the underlying tissue below those electrodes uh, become more frequent and more active. You have more signaling from there. What consciousness is, isn't a particular thing that I could describe to you. But what unconsciousness is, is a lacking of awareness of the stimuli around you. Now it's strange, people spend a good third of their life asleep, right? I mean, it's weird, when you're a baby, you spend tons and tons of time asleep. When you're an adult, you spend about a third of your time asleep. Um, and, you know, if you're 60 years old, that means really you've only spent 40 years awake. Um, it's an interesting thought. Why do we sleep? What is sleep for? What is the function of sleep and how does it aid humans? Um, are there variabilities in sleep? And there certainly are, we'll get to those in a bit. All right, the book talks about consciousness a bit, um, referring back to Wilhelm Wundt and Edward Titchener, who were initially trying to sort of explore what consciousness is, but where our, our best sort of tool for understanding what it is comes from is William James, the father of American psychology. He suggested that consciousness is sort of the stream or the continuity that we have. Sorry, I'm trying to get the focus in here. The stream or continuity that we have of our sensory experiences in the world. Um, Later, um, I talked about before the sort of history of psychology going from psychoanalytic to behaviorism to humanism. Kind of after humanism, um, the field of psychology kind of went into this uh, cognitive psychology um, field and that really has to do with studying sort of what are the capabilities of consciousness. So it's almost like it went full circle from Titchener and, and Wundt all the way back down, you know, Freud and Skinner and Maslow, and then it kind of came back to the cognitive psychology uh, revolution, and that was right before the decade of the brain. And so cognitive science was studying the, the capabilities of people's consciousness. That was like linguistics and memory and executive functioning. And this was actually the, the field that I got my degree in was cognitive psychology from uh, UC Irvine. Uh, later, my PhD was in clinical neuropsychology, which is an allied and, and um, adjacent field. But um, that, uh, that field of cognitive psychology really is still in full bore today. Today we talk about cognitive neuroscience, sort of the neuropsychology and the cognitive science joined forces um, to understand what the brain's capability of producing conscious level activities in humans' brains was. Um, the book also talks about the idea that consciousness is subjective. And that makes perfect sense. If any time you've ever been confused about something that everybody else wasn't confused around, uh, you've experienced some cognitive dissonance. Um, if you uh, thought something happened and that wasn't what happened and everybody else knew that that didn't happen, you've experienced the subjectivity of your own consciousness. That it's not an objective recording of the world. Um, we'll see this time and again in social psychology, in memory. We'll see that your subjective experience of the world, your conscious experience of the world, is only in relationship to you. It's not in relationship to what's actually happening. It's correlated 
but it is not um, an accurate rendition of what's happening. Otherwise, none of us would ever get tricked. None of us would ever um, uh, have hallucinations or delusions. Uh, and clearly, we have those. We'll talk about those when we talk more about drugs in a little bit. All right, so I'm here with Caleb. And uh, I didn't know that we'd be matching today, but you know, great dressers dress alike. Um, so Caleb, I'm talking about consciousness. So from your understanding, what does consciousness versus unconscious mean? Uh, consciousness means- You gotta speak up, these people need to hear- Consciousness means you're aware of your surroundings and unconsciousness means you're unaware of your surroundings. Also, when you're conscious, conscious you can control your body but when you're unconscious, you cannot. Okay, so it not it's not just sensory perception of the world around you. It's also your efficacy to move and to, like, choose your own actions, your free will, right? It's like, unconsciously, you don't have free will, but consciously, you do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about dreams? When, when do those occur? You told me that they occur. <laughs> <laughs> when do you think they occur? When does it feel like a dream occurs? Come on, Henry, come it here. It feels like it occurs when you're unconscious, come here. but... Come join us. He told me here, it scooch over. Scooch over. Henry's going to join us now. He told me it occurs when you're, oh, like just in the waking moments. All right, so... Since you have consciousness of thought, and you don't have... Well, you pretty much... I think you pretty much have consciousness of your thought. You gotta get in the video here, scooch over. I think you have consciousness of your thought, but not your movement. Like when you're unconscious, you can't move. Or but like you're saying, think, you, and then... You're presenting an alternative to the students. You kind of disagree with me, that's good. That you think you're dreaming when you're asleep and you're aware of that sort of story, that narrative, but that you can't move your body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and it's like a... And your dream just moves for you, sort of. Sometimes you're moving in your dream. Like, rocking around. And you can't, like... Walking around. Yeah, do you know what the you... word is for that? When people walk in their sleep? Sleepwalking? Yeah, that's, like... that's the t typical word. The, the word that is used in science is somnambulism. Somnambulism. Somna means that you're asleep. Like, somnolence is that you're really tired. And somnambulism means you're, you're sleepwalking. So sometimes you can move, but are you consciously choosing to walk? No. Right, so you're unconscious and moving. So well, you're thinking. Are you thinking when you're asleep? If you're dreaming, then how other, or elsewise, would, would you um, be able to uh, configure it, a story? Okay, so how else would you be able to configure a story unless you were thinking? So what you're saying is thinking is anytime you are having thought. Okay, anytime you're aware of something or having thought. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Good thoughts from, from my boys. Caleb's picking at himself. He's aware of his environment. Um, have you guys, Henry, have you had any dreams lately? Um, I did have a dream where You gotta I was, speak up so they can hear you. I did have a dream. I was sleeping um, on a, a like couch like thing on the deck and I was dreaming that I was, I was on sleeping on the deck. So what you're saying is but you were confused woke, between... But then I fell asleep and then I automatically woke up. You fell asleep and then automatically woke up? You ever wondered what wakes you up? Um... No, not really. No? I mean, what wakes you up in the morning? Mom, if it's a school day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What wakes you up in the morning, Henry? Mm, I agree with Caleb. <laughs> and also, I don't really know. I just wake up. So there's some process that wakes you up, right? Because you wake up every day. Mm -hmm. You ever worried that you won't wake up? No. No? I mean, you don't know what wakes you up. Maybe you I won't. guess my thought? So you're thinking. I think yeah. I want to wake up when Are, I'm sleeping, but I can't, can't think that I'm thinking of thinking about waking up. Okay. Have you ever tried to wake up at a certain time? 
Yes. How did that go? Um, and I tried to wake up when I normally woke up, and I woke up at there that same time again. Okay. I continue to um, wake up around the same time. Caleb, have and you ever tried I that before? Up a lot. Yeah, I set an alarm and then I woke up ten minutes before the alarm two days in a row. Wait, so you set an alarm to wake up at a certain time, but you woke up prior to the alarm? Yes. What do you think's doing that? Um, <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? We have some sort of a mechanism in our brain that is transitioning us between unconscious and consciousness, right? Yeah. And we don't really understand it. Does mm -hmm. that disturb you guys at all that we don't understand it? No. Mm, no? You're okay really. with it? Not really. Good. You shouldn't be uh, disturbed by things we don't understand. But if you guys investigate this, you might be able to figure out stuff that people don't already know right now. Maybe you'll be able to defeat my contention that you only dream as soon as you wake up and you're conscious. You don't have these apparitions behind you like that guy. <laughs> Speak, apparition. <laughs>